let me ask you this, folks. Why can't you be an RVP or a PRVP? Why, why can't you make $100,000? I know you look right now and you say, Art, I ain't got no college education. I ain't ever made over $30,000 a year. You know, I've got $70,000 in debt. I, I, I mean, I'm just, I mean, I'm down and out like you can't believe. Uh, I mean, you can make every excuse in the world, folks. But I want to ask you this. Why can't you get it up again? Why can't you dream again? Why can't you hope again? Why can't you see yourself making $100,000 a year? Why can't you see yourself going to Hawaii or Europe? Why can't you see yourself being an NSD? Why can't you do that? Nobody at A.O. Williams had a reason to in 1977. The odds were against us even surviving. I mean, it was stupid for us to sit there and talk about beating Prudential, going to Europe, becoming a me. It's stupid. Anybody in their right mind would have said, y'all are crazy, you're stupid, it's nothing but pump up. You're just selling these people down the river. Just crazy. Anybody in the right mind would be stupid to go to work at A.O. Williams. The odds are against you even surviving. Why do... Why? Why can't you see yourself becoming an RVP? Why can't you see yourself building a company within a company? Why can't you see yourself building a national company, an international company? Why can't you see yourself producing RVPs underneath you that make $100,000 a year and a million dollars a year? Why? 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 See, I, I believe in order to make that happen, you got to sell out, folks. You got to sell out. Everybody, maybe even your spouse, thinks you're stupid. Most spouses do think you're stupid when you sell out for a period of time, okay? Hey, you understand that, okay? Listen to me now, folks. You got to sell out. See, see, 50 percent of our leaders in A.O. Williams have settled into A.O. Williams. It's a job. The three things I see that just kill, kills me when I talk to some of you. Uh, number, you, you have spent, some of you spent 12 years at A.O. Williams, 10 years, 5 years, or 20 years okay, like me. And, 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 and every day you spend your life pulling out fires. Just like that inner circle guy that I talked to the other day. I felt so sorry for him I can't stand it because uh, he listens to the negative people, you know, and it gets him down. And it's such a track because this guy could be such a great leader and, you know, and he's got so many potentially great leaders in his organization. But he will never live to see the tremendous potential in his team as long as he lets the everyday problems beat you down and get you down, you know, just dealing with the negatives putting out fires. Uh, second thing I see is I see that, and, and I think the company has, has been guilty of, of hurting you a little bit in this area, but we've got some small thinking people. You know, we've reduced our guidelines now to where we talk about go out and do three recruits and you be an RM. Used to, you had to go out and do something like ten or 15000 a month, you know, for three months in a row to become a, a district and do 40000 you know, three months in a row to become an RVP. And we had such big dreams. Well, now, you know, we've given you sort of, uh, and I'm happy for you. I wouldn't change, I understand, okay, because this is nothing but an asset. But if you're not, if you're not careful, you can say, well, what's the minimum I can do? And you try to always do the minimum. You know, to get my overrides, you've got to do $1,500 or $2,500. And so, you, so all of a sudden, we've reduced guidelines down to a point where if you want to, you can make a living doing minimums and you build bad habits. All of a sudden, you've lost your ability to dream big and balls to the wall and go do incredible things. Hey, folks, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. One of the principles I live by in life, if you're going to be a head coach and you're going to build a team, you've got to create an atmosphere of, I don't care how impossible it looks, we're going to go win. I, I don't care. I don't, you quit then, you know, uh, don't let the door hit you in the butt. you got to pull your own little red wagon, okay? I mean, I don't care what the competition says. I don't care what the press says. I don't care what nobody says. To hell with you. I mean, I'm going to win. I'm going to be somebody. And I know uh, a lot of people, they look at me and say, well, Art, you're weird. And I know I'm weird. You got If people don't look at you as being weird, you, then, then you're going to be like them, Right? And you, you're going to be average and ordinary, right? Now, li now, listen to me. Listen to me, folks. I still said some of you missing the boat. You're out there saying, yeah, right, yeah, all that kind of crap, okay? But some of you don't even know what the hell I'm talking about, okay? <laughs> now, listen to me. See, without a big dream, folks, you're dead. Now, folks, think about this now. With 85 people in 1977, put your camera on that, two people making $100,000 a year, okay? Now, let me tell you the kind of dreams we had. Listen to this now, folks. Listen to this. We're going to beat Prudential. 
Prudential's a giant, a legend. We said we're going to beat Prudential and become the number one producer of individual life insurance in the world. We said we're going to have conventions in Hawaii, in Europe. We said we're going to have hundreds of people that are going to be cash flowing over $100,000 a year. You understand, folks? Most of those 85 people were starving to death just like most of you right now. Uh, we said we're going to be a national company. Do you understand, folks? We were licensed in 15 states. We were operating in three. But we said we're going to be a national company. More than that, we're going to be an international company. Folks, does that tell you anything? Does that tell you the kind of thing? And look at what we built. Look at the millionaires we produced, number one in the industry, all the wealth some of our families are giving. And we did that, I believe, because of the dream. We had a big dream, no reasons to, to, to think that you could make it. There was no way you could sit down and draw out a game plan that would make it happen, okay? You don't win in business that way. You win with a will to win. You win with a big dream. The dream fuels desire, that, uh, that boundless kind of desire to be somebody and win. That's what this business is always about. <laughs>